Hi, Cancer and Cancer Rising. Here's your horoscope for July 2024. I'm astrologer Joseph Anthony. All right, here we are. This is your time of the year. So if you're a Cancer Sun sign or a Cancer Rising sign, this reading is for you. Now, this is a general Western astrology tropical reading. Okay, I use the whole signs here because um, I don't have everybody's birthday. Everyone's birth chart is completely different. And, um, you know, everyone has a different birthday. So, you know, I, this has to be a very general overview. So when we have the sun uh, going through your sign, you get energized. You want more attention. You're feeling more creative. And this time of the year is when the sun goes through your sign. Now, this year we have Venus and Mercury also going through your sign. So in July, this is very favorable for many of you. So if you're looking to make more money or you're feeling like remodeling your home <clears throat> or, uh, you know, you're thinking about romance, this is all in a favorable alignment for many of you. All right. Uh, especially since we have Mars also in the 11th house. So you're feeling more social than normal. Uh, this month, the second half uh, should improve the financial situation or it has something to do with creativity and spending more time with your children. And I'll get to that a little later. But as we start off the month here, um, you know, we've got uh, what else? We've got Neptune that's going to go retrograde. We have Venus, uh, excuse me, Jupiter in the 12th house of spirituality. So many of you are kind of laying low or reflecting on the past this whole year up until uh, June of 2025, you'll be doing all of this reflection and thinking about things, working from behind the scenes, using your imaginations, which is fantastic, okay? But this one here, Pluto, this is the tricky one because Pluto just left your seventh house of relationship. So over the last, you know, I would say 12 to 14 years, you've noticed how your relationships have dramatically changed. But Pluto is in retrograde mode and will backtrack into your seventh house in, in September. And so that's going to bring up an issue from the past with a relationship in some way. But not this month, but more in September. I'm just giving you a little bit of a heads up. Um, you know, we also had um, the square between Mars and Pluto. So maybe you had a little friction in June. But this month is all about moving forward, uh, you know, in, in all dynamic uh, areas, especially financial and your own personal identity. So as we get started, as I said, Neptune goes retrograde in Pisces. Now notice it's very close to Aries and both Neptune and Saturn will go into Aries next year, which is going to be your 10th house of career. So it's going to shake up your whole career sector uh, in some way. I'm not saying it's bad or good. When, it, when we get closer to that, I'll show you what I'm talking about. But this month uh, with Neptune going retrograde, it's giving you one last look in this ninth house of travel, exploration, uh, philosophy, meaning of life. So you're going to be questioning all of that. Now, Neptune is a very subtle underlying uh, planet because it's a it's an outer planet. So this will last for about four and a half to five months. It'll just be hovering over here. Now we have two planets in retrograde. This is in stationary position before it goes retrograde. And we have Saturn here. So these two are kind of like a, an anchor holding you down psychologically, emotionally, and, you know, trying to question everything. Uh, this will definitely make it more, you know, curious will make you more curious with Neptune going retrograde. OK, but there's other things in here that are more positive, like Mars going through the 11th. Mars is going to meet up with, a, uh, with Uranus. So you're in for some surprises also this month. And it could start at the beginning of the month going towards the first or second week of July. OK, so not a big deal. Then Mars will leave here and go into your 12th. <clears throat> but the next time we have is Mercury entering Leo uh, about the same time, a couple hours after uh, Neptune starts going backwards. Uh, here we have Mercury, which is our thinking. Now it's geared more towards creativity because it's in Leo. It's in your second house of income and values, finances. Uh, partnership potential. So the need to be more creative is definitely on the rise now with Mercury just entering this house. So it'll be here for three weeks. And then I believe on the 25th and 26th, it'll go into Virgo. But this will help you quite a bit, you know, with the thinking. But notice, I want you to quickly notice on the second, it immediately, uh, the second and the third, it'll immediately uh, oppose Pluto. So be careful of arguments or disagreements or frustration with money because of this alignment here okay so it's a, just a transit it only lasts a day or two and then it'll move on <clears throat> so 
But the new moon this month is in Cancer on the 5th. This is going to be at 14 degrees right here. So depending on where it is in your actual birth chart. But here in this uh, sun sign reading, it has to do with your first house of identity and self. So this means, um, you know, kind of a fresh start, a new image, uh, being seen in a different way, maybe changing your appearance, your hair color, your, you know, how, how, you, how you others see you, wanting more attention. This is all part of the new moon in Cancer. And the new moon will be favorably aligned to Mars. So there's quite a bit of motivation in this new moon. <clears throat> and also Venus will be loosely uh, aligned with it. So romance or socializing and interacting with others is going to be very important over the next two weeks. So from the 5th all the way to the full moon on the 21st, uh, this will be active. Okay, so new people, uh, new reinventing yourself, uh, being seen or heard in a different way. Maybe you're buying some new clothes, whatever. Um, but you feel a little bit more empowered. Every time we have a new moon in our sign, uh, we feel a little bit more empowered. Okay, so that's how you have to look at that. So it's a, it gives you kind of a fresh start. Okay, um, Venus enters Leo on the 11th and 12th. Now we have a second planet entering the second house. Now, Venus is about partnerships, but it's also about finance and, uh, and resources. And so in, in the second house, maybe you're making more money. Maybe you ask for a raise. Maybe your business is doing well, so more money is coming in. Maybe you're thinking a lot about money because now when Venus comes in here, it also opposes Pluto. So there could be, again, this little bit of a challenge or a frustration. Now remember, you know, the whole financial system is, is changing worldwide, especially in the United States. But <clears throat> so this is part of this energy we're all feeling. The uncertainty of how this new currency is going to be created, where, when it's going to collapse, a whole nine yards. So this has been going on for quite a while, and it's not meant to scare anybody. It's just meant to be, um, you know, informative. Like you know, it's coming. You just prepare for it psychologically, emotionally, and physically. You know, you buy supplies, or you know, you stock up on stuff you might need. <clears throat> you know, excuse me. So that's all it means but personally it could have something to do with a relationship or a creative project that maybe needs funding uh it could be a partnership of some kind venus is all about partnerships so maybe you're getting into a partnership with someone remember the new moon just got activated on the fifth so you'll be drawing new people to you <clears throat> so it could have something to do with that as well but it is a little bit more beneficial once it passes pluto okay and then it starts moving down uh it should help you out a little bit more now Mars enters Gemini on the 21st. Here it is. Okay, now Mars entering Gemini is not the greatest for a Cancer or a Cancer rising because Mars is our motivation and now it enters the thinky uh, brain sign, you know, self-expression sign of Gemini in the 12th house. So that means for many of you, you're not as motivated or you're overthinking things. You know, especially having to do with the past. You know, you're one of the signs that reflects upon the past a lot. And so uh, in the 12th house, it's more of that reflection. But uh, Mars is kind of weakened in the 12th house. You know, it starts to feel sorry for itself. It's not sure. It's not as motivated. And with all this Gemini energy between the Jupiter and the Mars in Gemini, you know, the, the, the mind just starts racing. So the best thing to do with this Mars going through this 12th house, it'll be about five and a half, six weeks, is to spend time by the water or you know take more showers or baths or if you're by a swimming pool or a river because this is a very watery house okay even though it's in in fires i mean it's in air signs here this is a very watery house and cancer is a water sign so the more time you spend um you know in in water or near water the more relaxed you feel you don't overthink you go okay i will do the best i can it'll all work out but this will definitely diminish some of your motivation because it's in the 12th house. And you might be finding yourself working by yourself on projects and just wanting to hide out and you know, you're not wanting to socialize as much. That's the downside to Mars in the 12th house. So at least you have a heads up, okay? So it's not really bad. It's just something that you need to pay attention to. Now, the same time that happens, about an hour later, the full moon in Capricorn, I know this is Aquarius, but it's on the last degree of uh, Capricorn, which would be the seventh house cusp of the eighth. So it's it's opposing, the sun is opposing the full moon in Capricorn, bringing something to light, having to do with relationships or your sense of purpose. Now, fortunately, this full moon is very favorably aligned to Neptune and to Uranus. 
So you might be getting some help from someone or you're surprised about an endeavor. You're surprised about, you know, another person and they're in your interactions with them. You know, you're coming to realizations that this is not working for me. I, I think I need to change. You know, that kind of energy is in the works. And of course, because we're talking about Capricorn, it could be also about my sense of purpose. What am I supposed to do? You know, that kind of stuff. Okay. So don't uh, feed into it too much. This is just a transit. Uh, you know, it happens every month. This time it just happens to be very closely aligned to Pluto in the seventh, eighth house cusp, which has to do with other people and financial matters. Okay, so do the best you can. Now, the sun enters Leo. This improves, or this should improve your financial uh, dealings because the sun in the, two, in the second house is very creative and it does make money and it, it does draw attention. And so now you have three planets in the second house. So if you're looking for a raise, if you're looking to make more money, if you're looking for, you know, buying new things for the home or improving, uh, now you're in a very creative phase okay with all this leo energy in the second house so you know try and find something that uh helps you during the course of the next 30 days to you know create something or to you know to, to to remodel something or to improve something because you got the energy with you at this time okay and yes it will be opposing pluto but not a big deal only last for a day and then it'll keep moving but this is you know helping you to go deep within yourself to figure things out and last but not least, on the 25th and 26th, Mercury enters the third house in Virgo. Now, this is overanalyzing everything, and Virgo tends to worry a lot. So you might find yourself overanalyzing your current situation, your thinking, what am I doing, where am I going? You know, and maybe you're having important conversations with your kids or family members, okay? So just be ready for that. Um, and they may come to you for advice or understanding of some kind, and you'll be there to dispense it. All right, that's how it works. Anyway, there you have it. It's a brief overview, uh, you know, of what's going on. Do the best you can, um, you know, and uh, I'll see you next month. And by the way, there'll be a little uh, message at the end here, a special offer that I have. Uh, please check it out and, and consider joining. All right. Thank you so much and have a great month. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Hi, thank you so much for watching my monthly astrology. I really appreciate your support over the years. Have you ever considered learning astrology? Well, you're in luck because I've created a full online astrology course in my private community. It's a full six module course that takes you from the beginning of astrology, what it all means, the mythologies, the houses, all the way to the more advanced techniques, such as progressions, solar returns, how to, how to read transits, how to make predictions. It's all there in this course here. And I even dive into some of the mysterious stuff, you know, what some of the symbolism is all about. So I think you might want to check it out if you're interested. Along with the course, we have a very tight knit community here where everyone helps each other out. And so if someone knows a lot about astrology, they help other people with astrology. So it's a community that really gets involved and, you know, really wants to learn and help each other out. But as you can see here, I have a whole lot more on this uh, private community. Uh, I also have the inner circle live calls each week. Now, this is something that I do twice a month on YouTube, but here I do them on a weekly basis and I talk about various topics. You get to ask me questions. We interact and we learn a whole lot more than just astrology. So this could be anything from astrology to what's going on in the world, predictions, politics, whatever it is. We talk about it in the inner circle calls. Of course, I do have videos here that I do not have on YouTube. So you get the, you get uh, those two. And then I've got a private resource vault, which has videos uh, that I suggest watching, books, suggested reading, meditations and more. So if you're interested in learning astrology or want to be part of a great community that's really growing fast, head on over to the link down below and click on the link and join today. All right. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.